So let's talk a bit more about topologies. Uh, we've gotten into the physical layer. We've worked our way down. Uh, so how do we design a network uh, so that it uh, is most efficiently operable for our needs? Uh, different data link protocols have different topologies. Uh, so as I mentioned before, like with uh, Ethernet, we have a bus technology, technically, uh, although it's not implemented that way necessarily anymore. So we have different devices coming off of this bus, which is terminated at each side. <clears throat> but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Uh, and that's a physical topology. So we have two different types of topologies even. We have a physical and we have a logical topology. So physically, Ethernet originally was this, and logically originally was this, but no longer is the case. So logically, it's still a bus, but physically, it may be something different. So some physical topologies that we have as options are things such as stars. So this is a very common setup. Now that a lot of uh, locations have uh, switches, you can create a star topology. So you put your switch at the center and then everything goes out from that. So for example, we have a star topology. And you'll have a switch here. And then you'll have all your devices connect off of that. And that is a star topology. Pretty simple. And then you have all of your end devices, whether they're computers or fire control panels or whatever they might be phones, who knows. We also have things such as uh, extended stars, so that makes um, makes sense, right? So we have this, but instead of having a host here, we could have another switch. And now this is what you most likely will see out in the field, is some sort of extended star topology. This is also called hub and spoke, so star topology slash hub and spoke. So you have you have a hub and then you have uh, the spokes that come off. So, it, uh, But you could also have the extended version. So the extended version here we have another switch and then we have yet more devices come off of that. And this is what you most likely will see because this over here we'll give it another color. So this over here could be you know your central office. This over here could be you know remote office number one or something like that, or, or building number two, you know. So you'll have some sort of centralized uh, centralized backbone for each location, and then you'll have the devices branch off of that. If you're in a very large location, you know, you could have tons of extended star going on. So you could have a main central switching area. You could have, you know, a different building, and then off of that building you could have you know different floors so you could have you know floor one floor two and then those would branch off into different rooms and then each room could potentially have you know different switches and then off of the different rooms we could then have the hosts connected so you know like say we're doing a school or something like that so this is um, you know school room one in um, in wing one and then this is in building one and then this is the central office so you know that's kind of a way you could break it down so that's a very common uh, way of having a, of a topology uh, you can also have point to point so we mentioned this with the PPP protocol is you can have let's blank this out let's get this out of here get rid of some of this so I mentioned with the PPP protocol uh, it's a direct connection. So the point-to-point -point is pretty simple. You have some sort of device like a router, another device like a router, and then you have a single connection between the two. So you have this is point-to-point. -point. There's no other devices that can be connected onto it. Uh, that's that's all you have. You have one one interface, such as some sort of serial interface. And then you have another serial interface over here, maybe. And that's that's all you have. It's a direct connection. So that's another topology you could have. You could also have something like a mesh. 
So let's say you have a bunch of routers. We have a bunch of routers. These could be all interconnected. So they connect one to each other. But then all the others connect to each other as well. And then these two will connect. So now we have this nice star going on, but uh, this is the idea of a mesh. So every single device can connect to every other single device directly. So that way, if you lose one of them, you know, let's say this one goes down, then you still have a connection to all the other routers. It's very fault uh, tolerant. It's very redundant. But it's also very expensive. So that's the downfall to doing meshes. It's very expensive to do. Even in uh, a virtual standpoint of using frame relays, which we'll get into, it's still expensive to do because you have to uh, purchase all of these virtual circuits if you really want to do that but that is an option so you can also do mesh or partial mesh you know you don't have to do complete interconnectivity you could do a partial mesh as well uh, depending on uh, how much redundancy you need uh, so that's another one and uh, what's another we could do ring this is uh, kind of an older methodology uh, there's an old technology called token ring which uh, used to be taught that works in a ring, but then there's all the also ones like Sonnet and FTDI that work off of ring topologies. So some uh, some of the faster backbone architectures used in ISPs do use ring uh, ring topologies. And so the way they work is, uh, so for example, if we were doing like a token ring or something, you have these different devices. They could be host PCs, they could be routers or something, and then they're all interconnected in a ring. Now this is a this could be a physical ring. Um, back in the day with token ring, it was a physical ring. And then things were changed, and then you could actually get hubs that worked like, uh, worked, they worked physically like a star, but logically they were still a ring. So they don't necessarily have to physically be a ring, but uh, they logically would work as a ring. And the idea being that there's a token that gets passed from one device to another and when that token is received that device is then allowed to talk. It's kinda like passing the talking stick around the circle that's basically the idea there uh, and then it gives you redundancy as well because if one of these goes down you still can go this way or this way to get to those same locations uh, and with Oh, and that well, that depends on the technology though, because if this went down uh, in old token ring, it wouldn't be terminated correctly then, so you might have problems. But uh, some of the newer technologies, like uh, FDDI, has a duplicate ring in in here as well. So then, if one of these breaks, the other ring is still here to be used. Uh, so there's a redundant ring involved. So that's a, another topology that you could use. I'd say the majority of what you'll see is uh, the star topology, hub and spoke, and extended star of some kind. Uh, if you're talking VPNs or wide area connections, you might see some mesh going on, uh, especially if you use some of the fancier technologies out there for VPN, like uh, tunnel interfaces and dynamically built VPNs. You could do uh, a nice mesh over the public internet, actually, for almost no cost. Another technology uh, would be duplex, I mentioned. So in a topology, uh, you have the option within those physical connections of doing different levels of duplex. So we have half and full duplex. So with half duplex, one side speaks, the other listens. So one side speaks, the other side has to listen, and then once it's his turn, he can then speak. With full duplex, they both can speak and listen at the same time due to the way the pairs of wires are used. So it essentially doubles your your throughput, it doubles your bandwidth. So uh, 10100 uh, Ethernet offered half and full duplex options, uh, but once you get up to gigabit, that was uh, it's required to do full duplex to, for that to operate correctly. And actually, when you were using the the values of 10100 
Ethernet. Those are based off of the half value. So when it says 10 megabits per second, that's 10 megabits per second half duplex by listening, one side listening, one side speaking, and then taking your turn to then speak, and then someone else listens. Uh, if you were using full duplex with either of these, you would effectively be running at 20 slash 200. That's something to think about. Uh, and as I mentioned, gigabit is full only. You can't do half duplex gigabit. It, it doesn't work. Uh, there's some media access control methods I've, I've mentioned a little bit. Uh, there's CSMA CD. So when we're talking Ethernet with these topologies, they're using uh, CSMA CD. And then there's CSMA CA. And then there's that token passing method and such I, uh, I mentioned as well. So with CSMA CD, it monitors for the signal on the wire. When uh, a clear transit transmit is acceptable, uh, and if a collision or multiple transmits are detected, then uh, the, all devices stop and wait a random amount of time to retransmit. So they'll, they'll wait after collision. Be nice if I could spell today. There we go. Waiting after a collision. So with CSMA though, it has to wait wait longer, I guess you could say, for transmission. So there is a hold down time with CSMA CD, but um, that's after it determines a collision. CSMA CA has a hold down timer. Uh, in order to give you more time in, uh, to talk if there's uh, interruption noticed when you're trying to transmit it'll have a hold down timer and you'll have to wait longer to transmit whereas CD will only have that hold down timer if a collision occurs. Uh, so switched modern networks though if you're running a star topology and you have all these devices coming off you don't really have a problem too much though with CSMA CD for example in an Ethernet system because all these hosts are on their own switched network from their device to the switch so this is where it comes in really neat there's we're gonna start talking about collision domains uh, when we get into Ethernet and such and back in the day you had all these hosts interconnected and this was a hub the hub was dumb. The hub just connected the copper cabling from this connection to this connection. It was, in a, in a basic sense, it just was, you know, like solder the wires together idea. So when you sent out a signal, the other ones would notice that the signal was being sent. With a switch, and, and that's how CSMA CD would still be needed, because if this one is talking and this one tries to talk at the same time, then you'll have a collision and you'll have to go, go through that wait down, that waiting period of time. Uh, with switches, you have a dedicated switched connection from your host to your switch. So this instead is a switch. When this host talks to the switch, no one else knows he's talking. He has his own collision domain, and we'll get into that more, but that's his own collision domain there. So if you only have one host and one device, so you have one network card here and one network card here, if that's all that's on there, it's essentially a point-to-point -point connection, right? So there's really no need for CSMA CD in that. So you don't really have any problems with collisions. You don't have problems with waiting for things. Uh, that's yet another reason why wired connection is inherently faster, especially with the use of switches in your internal network. Uh, you no longer have to really worry about uh, collisions in your network because we don't use hubs anymore, or at least you shouldn't be using hubs anymore. So that's something to think about when you're designing a network is uh, that you have that option of not uh, of using a switch and not worrying about that kind of contention that that may occur, uh, for example, with wireless, which is also a good reason why that's used as the backbone for your network, uh, especially if everything's working off switches like this. You have you know minimal interruption, minimal issues to deal with on your backbone. 
So with this, we will move on to Ethernet uh, basics, and we'll talk a bit more about uh, some of the different speeds that were available, so the sublayers of the Ethernet, and uh, we'll move on there to ARP and uh, getting into switching.